in use. But welcome. It's been a long time. We are so glad that you are here. Our worship continues in your bulletins. Would you please stand as you are able? Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be His kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Together now, Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known. From you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Like you shall arise after you. This is the 
this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm today is Psalm 119, verses 129 through 136. Your decrees are wonderful. Therefore, I thank them. Jesus Christ, our Lord. 
in my own life, I have found myself saying, I must admit to you, I must confess, that as a white middle class southern man married to the same woman for 21 years, there might as well be a target on my back. How is it that it became open season on me, I sometimes say. And I started doing some research, and I looked all the way back to the early 90s, and I found an academic study that asked respondents, hundreds of them, whether the demographic they represent had been victimized. Maybe their gender, maybe their socioeconomic status, maybe they came from a divorced household, maybe they never knew who their father was, maybe they failed out of school, maybe they battled with addictions go through the list, but they asked 100 people whether they had ever been victimized. And the number of yeses, you can't make this stuff up, the number of yeses to those 100 surveys added up to 400% of the respondents. Another example from that same study, a woman named Kathleen from Austin, Texas was awarded $780,000 by a jury of her peers because she had broken her ankle tripping over a toddler who was running loose in the furniture store where she was. That seems like a large amount of money, but it was made even more mystifying when the owners of the store were surprised at the verdict, considering the misbehaving toddler was Kathleen's own two-year-old son. Please don't hear me blaming victims here. In the end, I definitely don't want to confuse victim with victim culture. Here's what I mean. There is a huge distinction, a chasm, between being on the receiving end of trauma or a tragic event and the leap we must take to internalizing that to mean we will ever be powerless over our future, that things will never get better, and it will always be this bad or worse. What does that mean in the context of our scriptures? At least this. The kingdom of heaven is always described by Jesus in parable form when it's vitally important for us to get it. And when he does it five times in a row with such simple things, such well-known things, maybe he's trying to warn us in the healthiest way possible that we are surrounded if we're willing to see it by God's unfolding kingdom. How else could it be an unassuming shrub, a pearl in the midst of a slimy oyster, a fallow and worthless field, even a yeast bowl? Didn't we just hear last week that the weeds, yes, the weeds are growing, in the midst of the wheat? Of course they are. We know the world is broken. It doesn't take a rocket scientist. We know that the innocent suffer. We know that it's not whether we will be unjustly treated or hurt or labeled because of our skin, our zip code, our marital status, our gender, our intelligence, our beauty, or lack thereof, our weight or our age. Add them all up. Give me a few minutes. And our grievances will always outnumber us. In the end, though, none of those things on my list can compare, anywhere near compare, to what Paul and the church in Rome was facing. And certainly none of it has compared ever or since to what our Lord and Savior Himself was facing. Shoot. I don't know about y'all, but none of it compares to what most of our grandparents were facing. Little bit compares to what's happening to Christians and women and minorities in third world countries and other parts of the world. Really? If a mass and limited COVID numbers and politicians drive us from our faith, we have missed it entirely. The good news, dear people, is you 
and I get to choose. No, the world is not fair. It is not fair to you, and if no one has told you for the wrongs you've suffered unjustly, let me apologize. It isn't fair. But it doesn't mean you don't get to choose how to react. The world is not fair to me and 400% of the groups to which we all belong, but it is also beautiful. It is loving. It is caring. It is hopeful. It is supportive. And we can choose this morning and each day to live our lives in one of two ways, really. And that's what this morning is about. We can either live our lives convinced that it's not our fault. Everyone is against us. The system is rigged. No one cares. Every man for himself. We will always draw the short straw. Or, or we can hear this good news. Convinced. Convinced, dear friends, as Paul says, that in all things, we are more than conquerors. Through him who loved us, and paraphrase, convinced that neither the color of our skin, nor our parents, nor our socioeconomic status, neither our gender, nor our spouse, or lack thereof, neither our age, nor our credit score, or our report card, no person in the White House, and no person who's running for the White House, can ever separate us the love of God that we have all of us in Christ. Certainly not politicians, the wrong media outlets, or anything else in all of creation. Hopefully you get the message from Paul and from the gospel this morning. We are awash in the kingdom of heaven if we would, would but see it. And there is nothing, no nothing, that can separate us from that good news. Amen. And now would you stand as you are able and say with me the words of our faith found in the Nicene Creed printed in your bulletins on page 3. We believe in one God. The Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen, we believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, the true God from true God, begotten by the name, one being with the Father, through Him all things are saved. For us and for our salvation, he came down by the by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and he was made man. For our sake, he was crucified by the Jesus Christ. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and in his kingdom will have no We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge the baptism for the forgiveness of Seated or kneeling as you are able, here or at home in peace, we pray to you, Lord God. For our people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. Lord, hear our prayer. For this community, the nation and the world, for all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. Lord, 
For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble, especially first responders, and all those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. Lord, hear our prayer. For Michael, our presiding bishop, Frank, our bishop, and for all bishops and other ministers and all churches in Glen County and their leaders. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, especially Barbara, John, Faye, Sue, Ed, Walker, Diana, Bubba, Amy, Clayton, Mary, B, John, Dot, and Mary Ellen. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. For all those with birthdays and anniversaries this week, especially Betty, Scott, Martha, Betsy, Kim, Katie, Brooks, and Rogelio, Albert, and Joyce, Jerry and Judy, Mike and Nancy, Dan and Lita. Oh, and now, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God.
as Christ loved us and gave himself an offering in thanksgiving to God. Do this for the remembrance 
of me. And after supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you are able to drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling His death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you now these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in Him, and then sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament, serve you in unity, constancy, and in peace. And at the last day, bring us with Mark and all those who have gone before us in faith, all your saints, into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him, with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Oh, we've waited so long. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. Friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on Him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. You may be seated until the ushers get to your pew to release you and come straight down from Gary's going to be at one side and Loretta at the other. Everybody at Christ.
Turning now in your bulletins to our closing prayer, close communion, note a slight shift in that prayer as we pray together, eternal God, heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body. Send us now to the world in peace. And grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with the gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Life is not fair. We have struggles. Those struggles are real, but they need not separate us from the love of God we have in Christ. There is nothing that can do that. Take that blessed assurance and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. May He go with you, be with you, and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. And now, beloved people of God, let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, during our prelude, as James begins to play, we want to encourage you to file out, maintain your social distances, come up to the altar so we can wave one more time and then depart through the side aisles. Thank you for being with us today. God bless you. We'll see you again next week.